the 20th letter in the Hebrew alphabet in the Aleph base is the letter Resh. Resh sounds like the letter R for Rabbi or Rebbe. And depending upon the Nakuda, the vowel that we put beneath the Resh, it could be Re, it could be Ro, it could be Rai, etc., etc. The letter Dalid. The graphic, the letter Resh, is similar to the Dalid. And the letter Resh represents a poor man who is bent over. Now, the word Resh also means poor. As it says in the verse, Villarash ain't coil, and the poor man has nothing. Now, why is it poor? It's poor for a number of reasons. It's poor because it's missing the third leg of the resh, which is the leg of the hay. If you have thought and you have speech, which are the two lines of the resh, but you don't have the third line, which is the line of action, you are truly poverty stricken. Because in this world, thought and speech won't get you anywhere. Thought and speech is the impetus to bring about action. And therefore, if you lack action, you are truly poor. Another reason you're poor is because your speech and your thought, the two lines of the resh, are poor thought and poor speech. In contrast to the dalid, which also looks like the resh, that has good thought and good speech, holy thoughts and holy speech. The resh has evil thoughts and evil speech. It uses foul language and it thinks evil thoughts. Another reason why it's poor is because it lacks the yud to the right of the resh. In contrast to the dalid that has the yud, the name of God there, which gives it spirituality, the resh has no godliness in its life. And therefore, unfortunately, it is lacking everything. We find this when we contrast the two words of Echad and Acher. When we say the Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekeinu Hashem Echad, here, O Israel, God is our Lord, God is one. We say Echad, and the Dalit is a large Dalit in the Torah. We have to be careful not to mistake in the Dalit for a Resh. If we say Hashem Acher, God forbid, God is other, implying other gods, says the Talmud, we can be Machriv Oilamais, we can destroy worlds. So from one God, God forbid, you can go to many gods, which is idolatry. What is the Gematria of Resh? The gematria of Reish is 200. Why is it 200? Because it says, what makes a person poor if he does not even have $200? Says the Talmud, if he lacks $200, he doesn't have $200, he has a right to collect alms. He has a right to collect charity. That makes him poor. And therefore, Reish, he is truly poor. He does not even have $200 to his name. The Talmud says, Ain ani elebedas. Who is a true poor man? One that lacks knowledge. If you lack the knowledge of Torah, you are truly poor. If you lack money, you are not truly poor. Money comes, money goes. That doesn't make you rich. True richness is knowledge of God, knowledge of Torah, and performance of mitzvot. And so, the Reish stands for Russia, stands for a wicked person, or Ra, it stands for evil. However, we have the ability to transform the Reish, to transform evil and make it good. How do we do that? 
the letter Resh also stands for Rosh, like Rosh HaYeshiva, the head of the school, or Rebbe, or the teacher. How do we do this? We do this by continuing to stroke the Resh. If you continue with the stroke of the Resh, which is a circular motion, we make the letter Chaf. Chaf, as we spoke earlier, represents Keser, which is crown, the crown of a king, alluding to one who is truly the head, the one who is the leader. Keser, which starts with the letter Chaf, Chaf is the gematria of 20. 20 times 10, in other words, 20 to its complete reality is 20 times 10 equals 200. So we see that the resh, which is 200, in essence could be the head, which is the letter chaf, 20 times 10. We said earlier that both the resh and the Dalit are very similar. The Dalit spells the word Dal, which is poor. The Resh spells the word Rush, which is also poor. However, the poor man who is a Rush is even more poor than the poor man that is a Dal. And therefore, because of that, when the one who is a Dal, which starts with the letter Dalid, returns, he becomes a Tzaddik. When the Resh returns, he becomes a Baltruva. And that's why from the Dalid we can make the letter He, or the letter Bez, which alludes to the role and the path of a Tzaddik. But when we turn the Resh into a Rush, into a head, which is Keser, or Crown, or a Chaf, then we have the level of Baal Teshuvah, the level of one who returns to God. And the level of Baal Teshuvah, we explained, is higher than the level of Tzaddik. There's a story told that the Ramban had a disciple by the name of Reb Avner. Reb Avner converted at that time to Christianity. When the Ramban once asked him, why is it that you, my student, Reb Avner, converted to Christianity? He said, because you told us that in the portion of Azinu, in the book of Deuteronomy, in that one portion of Azinu, you can find all the secrets of creation, including all the secrets of science. And I didn't believe you. And therefore, I figured if that is incorrect, then everything else you told me is also incorrect. And I gave up my belief in God. The Ramban prayed. And he said, ask me a question. So Avner said, fine. Find me my name in the portion of Hazinu. The Ramban prayed for a while. And God bestowed his kindness upon him. And he looked at the verse that said, which means, Almighty God says, I said, I would make an end to them. I would cause their memory to vanish from among mankind. In these four words, every third letter of that word, the third letter of Afayim is an Aleph, the third letter of Ashbisa is a Beis. The third letter, letter of Me'enoish is a Nun. And the third letter of Zichram is a Resh, spelling the word Avner. So here we see that God says, I will cause his memory to vanish from among mankind. Avner realized he made a big mistake. He realized he has to do tshuva. And he asked his teacher, can he do tshuva? And the Rabban said, of course you could do tshuva, no matter even though you become evil and sin, you could always return to God. And so he told him to leave, and he went into a boat, and he never returned. The Rebbe said at a Fabrengen once, that the first word of that pasuk is the word amarti. The third letter of the word amarti is the letter resh. 
Reish stands for Reb Avner, Rabbi Avner. So in the Torah, not only do we see the sin of Avner, but we also see the potential for the tshuva of Avner. And on the contrary, the Torah already embedded within the words of the Pasuk, Amarti, the letter Reish, implying that one day he would return through becoming a Rosh, becoming a head and becoming a Rebbe. And that is the power of the letter Reish, to transform falsehood into holiness and into the level of Keser, into the level of crown, implying a divine will and also divine pleasure in Almighty God.